Hi everyone, um, welcome to this afternoon's session, uh, Critical Issues, and you're stuck with me for the next half an hour. My name's Isla Haddo Flood. Can you hear? Can everyone hear? Not very well. Okay. Is that better? Not really. <laughs> Sorry? Louder. Okay, I'll try to speak louder. All right, so you're stuck with me for the next half an hour. Um, I'm going to be talking about starting from scratch. The context is um, Africa and work working with many people across and organizations and groups across Africa um, to activate uh, engagement with Wikipedia. So as you know, um, 15 years ago Wikipedia started and um, there's still a lot of challenges that uh, we face in Africa. Um, and so part of our challenges, there are many of them, but some, as you can see, oh, hang on, moving on the wrong thing. Our experiences are the same. We're just catching up. So um, we're the same. So, sorry, so in order to get Africa more involved, we've had to rethink a lot of the outreach programs and a lot of the ways that we work with uh, Wikipedia and encourage people to come onto Wikipedia. Um, so we've been rethinking outreach, we've been rethinking projects, um, we've been working, looking at how we keep innovating models to engage others um, and to reach other people, to build communities, to use existing networks to build our own and to draw in knowledge and content from undercovered regions, countries and thematic areas. Since joining the movement in 2011, I've seen that the training slash editathon slash wiki takes models change, warp and move into other things. Um, and it's very exciting to see a host of different engagements that happen now around the world and, um, and across different contexts. We need to keep doing this. We need to radic keep radically changing how we work and how we adapt um, to other people's uh, innovative thoughts and ideas to our own, um, to help our own um, movements move forward. So the challenges within Africa are um, there's little African content on Wikipedia. Uh, there's very few contributors to Wikipedia, relatively, and the consistent access to Wikipedia is hard to maintain. Um, so our context in Africa is similar to everyone else in many ways, but also different in so many. Through several projects and strategic regional community interventions, there have been some successes with activating volunteer communities across others, across Africa. There are other unexpected models in other parts of the world that have been used to great success. The present, this presentation is not a definitive list of those amazing projects all over, the, all over the world. And I'd really like to hear after this projects that you think should be on this list. I think there should be some space, maybe that's a result of this, where we can all share projects and share different ways that people engage. Um, maybe there's just a page that just shows how the difference is. Um, we've also had the support of amazing, uh, of amazing group of people, some intrepid Wikipedians from across Africa, um, and ama amazing organizations, and we have had funding support from very unusual people. So uh, I'd like to thank them as well. Uh, this also, yeah. So getting to the problems. So we have, Problem number one is little African content on Wikipedia. Research by Mark Graham at the Oxford Internet Institute has found that only 16% of content about sub-Saharan Africa is from the region. But even this number is inflated by relatively high numbers for South Africa, Uganda, Mauritius, Rwanda, and Zimbabwe. 
There are more er edits that originate from Hong Kong each quarter than do from the entire continent of Africa. So if you can imagine the difference in size and the difference in community. There are also more, there are more articles on Antarctica than there are on any one country in Africa. Antarctica is relatively uninhabited, so it just gives you the range of different of of the the issue. So, what are our solutions? So. Um, we work with content organizations. This is not a new, this is not trying to change uh, the wheel, but essentially it is how we've done it. We've gone around it in a different way. Share Your Knowledge was started by Yolanda Penser, uh, working with La Terra Vinter Center and then working with me at the Africa Center. And in the end, between up until 2012, it got 34,000 contributions uh, to Wikipedia about Africa, working with over 100 organizations across around the world. So it wasn't just one-on-one -on -one with a GLAM institution, it was working with over 100 GLAM uh, institutions and organizations across the, around the world. Um, Kamusha Takes Wiki in Uganda and Cote d'Ivoire reached 500, 454 people across 16 communities just in Uganda, and 40 Wikipedians in Cote d'Ivoire contributed 4,900 and 15 edits, but created 847 articles. They were working um, to create uh, content about different communities, so drawing content from communities and then porting those onto Wikipedia. Share your knowledge, um, which we've already sorry, discussed. Wiki Entrepreneur is, was um, an ex uh, experiment in in Malawi and Ethiopia, where we trained a Wikipedian in residence to eventually become sustainable by working with organizations as an open movement consultant. So his initial, their initial um, work was, in Wiki was on Wikipedia, but then they've now worked in, they work across the different GLAMs and across different cultural organizations to sustain their work and their livelihoods. Wiki Loves Women, which is currently, as you can see, is a current project of ours. Um, we work in four countries, in Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroon, Ghana, and Nigeria, to draw information about women, and not only about notable women, but about the context that exists around women, and the challenges that they face in four countries. We work with three, um, it's also about changing models, and we work with three user groups in, and one individual. So three user groups in Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and um, Nigeria, and one individual in Cameroon. And they work with civil society organizations and with network partners in order to draw the information that exists within civil society organizations onto Wikipedia. So we also do different models to encourage, sorry, yes, glam, too many to mention. So essentially those first organizations were all based around the glam model and there are many glam, too many glam projects that are also happening around the world that are, are successful. Um, our other solution is to encourage specific content. We see that people work much better if they are passionate about one, one theme or one, con one subject. To improve the content generally about Africa is just too broad a, a construct. So in Africa, we've done Share Your Knowledge, which is about uh, cultural, or cultural information. In Kamusha, uh, Kamusha Takes Wiki, it was specific about, we had specific themes and specific communities that we worked with. Uh, with Wiki Entrepreneur, it was also again a glam um, model. Um, Wiki Loves Women is about celebrating women and their challenges. And then Wiki Loves Africa is a thematic, um, it's a yearly photographic contest that changes how, that changes every year. So every year, in the first year we had cuisine, 
In the second year, we had uh, cultural fashion and adornment, and this year we're doing dance and music. And then Wikipedia Primary, which is about um, specifically about content uh, that to support the curriculum of primary schools across Africa. Um, that's a SUPSI uh, project, which is run by Yolanda Pensa. Elsewhere, projects that are very successful that also focus specifically on, on content, uh, subject contents, are uh, uh, Women in Red and Afro Crowd. Problem two, there are very few contributors relative to um, Wikipedia in Africa. So we have amazing and intrepid and incredible um, Wikipedians in Africa, but there are relatively few of them. And many of them don't get drawn into projects. They like to, like many people, like to just contribute on their own. Um, only 25% of the edits to subjects about sub-Saharan Africa come from within the within our region. And in this um, in this little thing you can see in this graph, you can see this is sub-Saharan Africa here. Um, and the proportion, the bottom graph is, uh, or line is the proportion of within region edits in committed edits, so percentage of edits by a region that are used to write about that same re region. And then on this, on this axis, um, the percentage of edits about a region that originate in the same region. So you can see that sub-Saharan Africa is not, is not is very low in that. So how are we trying to? What are the solutions to try to change this? So we encourage individual. We try to do projects that encourage individual contribution. So we run an Open Africa training program. Uh, we ha also have Open Africa toolkits. This is run. It started in collaboration with uh, Creative Commons affiliate grant and with Creative Commons uh, South Africa. Kelsey is here, for who we collaborated on it. Um, and the second one in Open Africa in 15 happened at the Goethe Institute and was paid was a partnership with the Goethe Institute. Wiki Africa allows individuals, as you know, it's a model, the Wiki Loves model, works around the world. But in this position, it allow, in, allows individuals um, and lowers the barrier to entry. So because it's very specific, the themes, and it's, very, it's encouraged by, it's supported by groups, by local focus groups on the ground, there are a lot of, um, of entries that come through. We also support training possibilities um, at the moment with Wikipack Africa, which um, is just has just been funded by the Orange Foundation. And what that is is a closed editing. Um, it's an action kit that contains the Wikifundi software, training materials, and supporting content that facilitates the outreach of local Wikipedians. So. When they go to tr do training or to do an editathon or to work with each other on different projects, and the lights go off and uh, the data runs out and the electri and the access is barred, they can carry on because they have a Raspberry Pi closed network that will work, um, and it's basically an offline wiki. Uh, pseudo wiki um, editing environment so they can do training as well as collaboration on project on articles um, elsewhere exciting things that we that I've come across and I'd like more input on these uh, wiki dojo which I think is a lovely way of working and training people um, glam boot camp which uh, I think has been very very successful and the CE Spring, CEE Spring. Another solution is to partner with aligned and uh, net with aligned groups and network partners. So um, we're only as strong as the groups that we work with, and within the African context, we've been very, very fortunate to work very closely with Creative Commons, but. 
we also have encouraged um, the the presence of and the work working with um, open street maps and many of the other aligned. We also work very closely with hubs across Africa to to speak and to uh, with organizations that do uh, coding and teach like Tech for Girls in Ghana and other organizations um, around Africa that work like that. Uh, we've also worked closely with um, mobile literacy in, Afri in African libraries and we're working with developing those. And an example that also seems to work very well elsewhere is Catalonia's network of pu public public libraries where there is an aggregation of training that happens which I think is is quite an exciting model. We also try to so all the projects that we do are multi-layered and in that they they try to approach and build at least three different elements into the projects. So with wiki building so we try to so Projects also build communities, so we make sure that there's engagement opportunities within each project to build communities around the Wikimedia um, projects. So in Africa, we have Wiki Loves Africa, Wiki Loves Monuments, Wiki Loves Earth, and all of those are opportunities not only for visibility for the organizations, for the groups, the planning user groups and the chapters in, in Africa, but there are also opportunities for um, people to engage more and to become involved. Uh, Wiki Loves Women works with networks specifically to port content from civil society organizations, and we work with the networks in order to, to make that happen. Uh, Wiki Loves Women, we launched Wiki Loves Women um, with 15, um, the 15 challenge, which was uh, coincided with Wikipedia 15, and we had uh, the most amazing response. We were m asking for 15 articles about African women, notable African win women, within 15 days, and because it was open to the Wikipedia communi Wikimedia community, we had um, 15 English-speaking teams. 27 participants on English. We had 18 French-speaking teams, 24 p participants on English. And we had one team of four participants from Armenia who completed 41 new articles in, in Armenia about notable women. It was amazing. Uh, we also got 71 new biographies in English. And thank you to the French, we got 122 new biographies in France, in French. So that was... <laughs> it was just slightly above our expectation of 15 articles. So thank you to <laughs> you guys. Um, yes, yeah, so also other projects are how amazingly well done. Um, and what I also haven't included here is Wiki Loves the UNESCO Biosphere, John's project. Um, solution, another solution is to retain and support commun communities. So there's no point in training people if you don't keep them going with you. So we, Wiki Loves Africa is an annual event and the reason we change the theme is to change how, um, is to change the engagement and keep, diff and also, involve new communities. So in the first one a lot of culinary uh, organizations were involved. In the second one we spoke to a lot of fashion fashionistas across Africa and uh, for music and dance you can imagine what's going to be happening with that. Um, there are lots of local group initiatives that happen and then also it's very important to keep uh, Wikipedians active, so um, Wiki and Darba was started by Wikimedia South Africa, and then Wiki and Darba in 2016 is going to be the, the torch is being carried by Wikimedia user group in Ghana. So we're very excited that that's carrying on. But just to show you that why um, con uh, constant um, repetition works. In Wiki Loves Africa, for the results in 2014, we had 600 and s um, sorry, 6,116 images were entered by 863 unique contributors from 49 countries. 
In the second iteration, in 2015, we had 7,508 images given, uh, and that was after cleaning, um, by 722 registered users. In we had eight countries um, that worked uh, as focus organizations, and there were 42 events as part of the project. Um, and the teams that were chosen and we worked with were Algeria, Cameroon, Egypt, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Tunisia, uh, Tanzania, and Uganda. So a full range of different countries from across Africa. Oh, and what's comparable to this is the enormous pressure of 100 wiki days. I think some of you might have taken part in that, but it's also a great challenge and it's a way of getting involved. Then the last of these challenges is to challenge the next generation. There's no point in us if we don't, we don't work with um, introducing Wikipedia and the joys and fun of Wikipedia to the, to the next generation. So we work with, um, we're about to launch the Wiki Challenge in African schools in at least seven countries, um, mainly Francophone Africa. That's going to happen in 2017 with funding from the Orange Foundation. Uh, we have a, the Nigerian user group has an Adopt to Schools series which has been entirely funded by them and they work, it's worked very um, well. And then there's the Egypt education program, pros, program that I think some of you know about. But another idea which I think is great is the wiki camp in Armenia. It seems to have also opened up a lot of new thing, a new um, thought. So the final problem is challenging access to Wikipedia. Um, and this is just consistent, a consistent issue. So we work, we've created an offline wiki-like editable environment where um, the software is called Wikifundi. Um, and it's, some of you might have been involved in a hackathon which is hoping to create that. Um, and then Wikipack Africa, which is a whole load of resources and materials, and um, as I have said earlier, the kit that involves that. So I put this in because I think we should just try things. I think that, um, as Amelia Earhart said, women like men should try to do the impossible. And I think if we don't, if we don't try, we'll never know. And if failure is as good a lesson as success. So, um, and I think all of these, these different models, should, we should try them and, and then share so that other people can also learn. So that, that's me. Thank you very much. And I also just want to say that th it's not just because I'm, sta I'm the one standing here, but it wouldn't be possible without the amazing people who I work with, and it wouldn't be possible without um, organizations, and, uh, and there's some of you are in the room, and I just want to thank you for being here and for being on this journey to make this happen. Thank you. Right, does anyone have any questions? Apparently I have to repeat your question. Anyone? Yes. Yes. Uh, it's a uh, very comp it's okay so uh, the question is uh, what explains the lack of contribution uh, given the demographic the demographics and using um, France as an example there are, there are it's a very complex issue so in many cases um, there's challenge to uh, challenge with regards to knowledge about um, technology or ability, so a lot of people learn technology a bit later. So they have access to 
um, coding and things much later than the children uh, than people do in, in, in Europe or America. Um, but I think it mainly comes down to not seeing themselves reflected and not seeing it as important to them. So if it's a bit of a chicken and an egg and a vicious cycle kind of story. If you don't see your town and your um, somebody who you admire on Wikipedia, you don't see yourself there. So it's somebody, you know, they have to start, and the whole point is about getting Africans to contribute their stories and their notability, but it's it's that story you have to get it activated. And a lot of people use Wikipedia in Africa, but they don't realize because of the Google thing, they don't realize that they're actually using Wikipedia. So it's there's also visibility, and I know that the the group from Wikimedia from Wikipedia Zero are trying to help with that as well with the global reach. Um, but it's a yeah, it's an ongoing issue. So there's yeah many layers in the story. Anyone else? I thought okay, great. Um no, we have okay, so that was uh have we considered working with tech companies or um, tech charities to do synchronous bidding with them? Um, I think to a certain extent there's only so much that us at the Wiki, Me Me Wiki Africa movement can, can do on uh, you know, a level. I think um, what we do is we work in concert with a lot of the user groups and volunteer groups on the ground and we try to support them in activating. I think that's a really good idea for those local groups to work because it only really works on a on a um, one on one because each context is different. So in some cases there are very active um, tech use a group, you know, text, and, and there's some who are connected to Baucamp and to, um, and to the, the hubs, and some are less so. Okay. Anyone else? John? I'm not sure, so what kind of funding are you talking about? Always. <laughs> Okay, so John is asking if there's any um, gaps, obvious gaps, in either funding or uh, things that hold us back. Um, so, yes, there are. There are loads. Um, so some are as simple as copyright issues and misunderstanding around copyright. Uh, some are working specifically with organizations that have content existing. So civil society are much more likely to have digitized content. But all of the um, GLAMs, so the, the more traditional GLAMs, like uh, galleries, national galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, are mo that's very much a digitization. So you might get, say, a project from UCT that worked in Timbuktu, and that's all been digitized, but a lot of the content is still not digitized in Timbuktu. And um, a lot, most of the national um, organizations and museums are really underfunded and under-resourced. It's not, you know, they're, they're not uh, classed as a high-level priority in many countries. So that is one of the elements. Um, but also just access, general access, general awareness. Um, and as far as funding models are concerned, it's about try, you know, working with different organizations to make sure that we're aligned, but also to, to convince them that it's worthwhile what we're doing. And we have been quite successful. We worked with Prince Klaus. We worked, we're working with the Goethe Institute. We worked with um, Found Orange Foundation and with CC. So there have been some big wins, you know, for that. It is possible. And sorry, the Wikimedia Foundation as well for Wiki Loves Africa. Okay. Anyone else? 
Okay. Um, I don't know if anyone has any other uh, models that they like. If you'd like to see me afterwards and suggest some, I can include it on the other one. Okay. Thanks. Martin, you can clap now.